Welcome to Cloud and Clear, Sada's Cloud Transformation Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the CEO Series. The reason you know it's the CEO Series because I'm here near Buckhead at the headquarters of Full Story with CEO and co-founder Scott Voigt. Welcome, Scott. Tony, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm so awesome. Great to see Good you. Good to see you as well. Great to be here in town. Welcome. Um, Welcome to Atlanta. Before we get started, I have to say this. Otherwise, you know, my marketing team will be really upset. Don't forget to click and subscribe. Isn't it weird to say that? Like and subscribe. Like, You're click, a subscribe. Yeah, I'm like a YouTube influencer. Thanks so much for having me, man. Um, my pleasure. We've been working together for quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking at breakfast about, you know, founder, CEO, our life, the ups and downs, the journeys, the evolution of our companies over time. And what I like to uh, educate our audience with a lot, because I get this question a lot, is, you know, I think the origin story of founders is as interesting as any superhero's origin story. I love our audience to hear yours. I've heard it a couple of times, but let's get it on the record. How uh, did you even get here? How did you found Full Story? Like, what's the last 10 years been like? But go back as far as you want. Well, no superhero here, that's for sure. Um, you know, my, my journey started uh, actually in the mid 90s, uh, where I got very lucky as I was coming out of Georgia Tech and I had an opportunity to work for a big consulting company or work for a teeny tiny startup. And uh, on the advice of, of my father, who worked for a big company for a long time, he said, take a risk. And so um, I have been in business to business SaaS software. We didn't call it SaaS back in the mid 90s. Um, since the mid nineties. And I started in a sales job selling cloud banking, didn't call it cloud either. Uh, got very lucky in that being part of a 10 person company that grew really quickly and went public just hooked me to the idea of being part of early stage companies. Mm -hmm. And so in the wake of that, I went and worked uh, for a venture fund for a little while. Like all young venture fund people, I went to business school and then on my way back to uh, from business school, I thought it's my time to try to be an entrepreneur. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I was down at Georgia Tech working on a business idea. And in a twist of good luck, I met my two eventual co-founders of Full Story. They were in the cube next to me down at Georgia Tech working on their own business. And um, we got along really well. We went to lunch every day and I eventually quit the idea I was working on and joined the idea they were working on. And then in another twist of good luck, we hit Google's radar in the mid, you know, 2005 period of time. Mm -hmm. And Google came in and acquired that little three person entity. There's like, a, there's a little side story where Larry Page uh -huh. was in Atlanta down at Georgia Tech on a Sunday morning and we were selling our heart out to the guys yeah. saying, look, this is what our technology does. This is why I'd be great at Google. This is Atlanta. This is Atlanta. Yeah. There's a ton of great engineers yep. and you should let us maybe start the engineering presence here. And more or less that came to be. And so wow. my co-founders started working at Google. I went off to another SaaS company and did some things. The whole time we just wanted to get the band back together. Mm -hmm. And so we, we got the courage six or seven years later to quit our day jobs. Um, we started working on an idea that was not full story. And by building out that company, we sort of realized that most companies that want to understand their digital experience, when their customers get to their site, they had no idea what was going on. Right. And so to call it a pivot from product A to product, product B is an understatement. It yeah. was a control alt delete. We saw yeah. an opportunity to build full story and, um, so we did, and we can talk more about what Full Story was, but it has been a very, very fun 10 year ride since then. And that brings us to the current date. Good for you for having the courage to pivot. Uh, not everybody does, but there's so many great stories of companies that become really big that were very different than what they started. So this yeah. seems to be one of those, but uh, you know, we're all in a space that's ever changing. The technology around us is changing. Customer demands and requirements are changing. So, you know, way beyond that pivot, full story itself has evolved sort of with the industry, with the technology, right. with mobile, with consumer behavior, I'm sure through the pandemic and beyond the pandemic. Uh, what's like this most recent evolution of the direction that the company is going? Right. And like, what has it been in the last few years leading up to this point? Right. Well, if, if you wind back to that moment where we 
started, we came across the idea of full story. What we really found was in order to understand visit behavior, you had to have the data. And there was a fundamentally flawed paradigm of, of collecting that data. And I'll tell you that most companies in the world, they still are employing this flawed paradigm. And it is this, you have to know what's important ahead of time. If you run a, a web or mobile property, like is, is add to the cart, is that an important moment for you? Yeah. It is, okay, great. Let's go get an engineer to go write a little bit of code so it phones home to a, a Google Analytics or an Adobe or a product analytics tool. Then we'll look at the chart and graph and we'll have all the answers only to find that you didn't instrument all the right things. Like mm -hmm. that add the cart button, uh, that was good, but what about that button there? We forgot to instrument it. Mm -hmm. So you, you end up not having the data. So that insight led us to the idea of full story, which is to be the deepest digital record for every visit. Mm -hmm. So we collect everything, everything. Mm -hmm. And then we put structure around that data and then we activate it for organizations. Now, 10 years ago when we had that idea, we knew the data was important, but the data world at that time wasn't really that mature. So we did what every other company does at that period is we built a SaaS pane of glass so our customers could log in every day and we would deliver insights to them through charts and graphs and tracking KPIs and session replay and heat maps and journey maps and all the great things that we do today. And we do that for 3,000 plus customers, ranging from huge financial institutions, airlines, lots of, of e-commerce and retail companies, big enterprise companies, native first companies. Basically, if you care about a digital visit, yeah. Full Story I mean, can help you. That's everybody today, right? It's pretty much everybody. I'm <laughs> sure there's somebody that doesn't care about it. We'll, we'll get them eventually. But it's really now across multiple user interfaces, multiple form factors, it's like, the, you were talking about how much you love your Apple Watch. Right. I mean, that's that did you know that as a user paradigm in itself is like completely new. So it's multiplied almost ad infinitum. But I want to go back to like the first paradigm you challenged, which was you know if you have really good designers or UX UI people, you could predict what's important, or right. you could predict what users are going to do. Right. You actually have proven that you can't, <laughs> you can't. at all. I mean, it's a pretty simple statement. Um, the problems and opportunities of digital experience are in the data. If you don't have the data, you can't get at the problems and opportunity. You're just guessing. And so people didn't have the data. We gave them a way to have the data. And then we gave them a UI to unlock that data. But here's the moment that we're seeing right now. And it's almost like another pivot really within the confines of Full Story is our customers and the market are coming back to us and saying, hey, Full Story, you have all of our data, all of our first party digital experience, and we're accessing it through your SaaS tool and we love your SaaS tool, but we, we've built out data science teams now and we've, we have the cloud infrastructure to build models, but we don't have the data. And so we're totally guessing at how to build. And, and so can you help power our models and our AI engines and full story is ready made for AI. And so we've, we're offering now pipelines of this structured data into their instances for their data science so teams okay. so they can now understand for the first time in a way they never have before. So it's a story where you, know, you build a great product, you get a bunch of users. Now you have this very unique data set. And then the data set becomes as valuable as the thing itself. We have all of that data, it is structured, is everything in between the clicks and the clicks and intuition. And to be able to have that now is, is immensely valuable. It's way easier to go to market with a, with a solution and continue to win and grow your customers when what you're offering produces a, almost indisputable, measurable ROI and impact. Right. And that's kind of not even this new generation of capabilities, I'm talking about the core capabilities of the right. product. Like how powerful has that been? When you deploy it, how long does it take for you to be able to like, we deployed it, we observed some information, we helped you change you know, three things, and now this is what's happening to your digital experience or your revenue or your market share or, or any of those yeah, things. I, I mean, it's, um, we used to, it was, it was a fun, almost a parlor trick where we would sit down 
with a, a potential customer. And they didn't really understand what we could do because it was so novel, such a different approach from the past. And um, we'd make them bring an engineer to the room. And we would say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and set up your instance. Why don't you go ahead and take the full story script and let's put it in your tag manager and hit deploy. And this was easier with smaller customers that didn't have sure. all, the, all of the baggage. Yeah. And then they would, and we'd sit and wait for a few minutes. And then we'd say, okay, let's go have a look. And to just watch their face mm -hmm. light up at mm -hmm. their insights that we mm -hmm. never had before is, um, it was like a superpower. Improving the click-through rate through the, through the shopping cart, just like a few percentage points. Like, oh, it's, it's like, it's huge for companies. Huge. Yeah. You, you think about it. So in, in the first um, iteration of Full Story, like what most of our customers think about us with today, uh, that we have, I think on average, over six different personas mm -hmm. coming back to this data set to get value from it, right? You have product managers that are trying to understand conversion rate. You have UX designers that are trying to understand, hey, we just pushed something. How are people actually interacting? What's the financial impact on the other side? Um, you have support people that are like, somebody just wrote in and things aren't working. You know, what's the, what's the real, what's the full story to, to what happened there? engineers, debugging, security people, understanding if there were bad actors. If you have all of the data, you can unlock those, those stories. Increasingly, I, um, as we're talking more about the data, uh, I sit down with C-level executives at Enterprise, and you know, their intuition is that this data is important, but you have to sort of unlock with the story, why it really, like how does this all sure. come together? Yeah. And I, I take them through this thought exercise where I say, um, you know, you're, you're a digital company now, we're all digital companies now. What 10 customers should you pick up the phone and, and apologize to? <laughs> because they came to your site yeah. yesterday, they yeah. tried to use your app and you yeah. gave them an absolutely horrible experience. Right. And you watch their face just sort of, well, how would I go about getting that data? I'd ask, well, how would you go about getting that data? <laughs> and the yeah. best they can come up with is they look at, uh, who was the loudest support ticket yesterday. Right, yeah. That's it, you're waiting yeah, for passive. some really upset customer, and I promise you, that wasn't the worst experience. Correct. Right, I, we, um, I don't know if you've done this with your business, but we, we changed our uh, health program at the beginning of the year. And so everybody's gotta go through open enrollment yeah. in that first day when everything changes over. Very large, reputable insurance company, not a full story customer. Mm. And I just watched our Slack channel as our own team was trying to enroll in this just absolute disaster, yeah. and they had no idea. Yeah. And so full story, having all of that data can unlock for mm -hmm. C-level people. Look, let's start with the 10 people you should apologize to, and we'll mm -hmm. tell you who those 10 people are. Mm -hmm. well, let's go, let's pick up the phone and make it better. Let's go fix those 10 problems. Because you know what, tomorrow, there are gonna be 10 more problems. Yeah. And 10 more after that, and then we can start to look at the opportunities of where you can start to meet people where they are. All customers are not the same. Some customers like big imagery. Some customers yeah. like lots of text. Some people are coming to your site with intent. Some people are a little trepidatious. How do we meet them with an experience where they are? Well, you have to know who they are and what they like. And you can do that by inferring things from their visit data. The potential for proactivity and a display of empathy to your customers in a way that kind of feels like magic. Like that's so, I can't, I can't remember the last time I had a bad experience and somebody then proactively reached out to me. It's like everyone depends on tickets and surveys and Yelp reviews and whatever, right? It's like, that's too late. <laughs> right, how often do you actually fill those yeah. things out, right? Because what's worse than being angry is being indifferent. Yeah. It's the customers that just leave yeah. and never come back, right? Right, and it, and it matters. Mm -hmm. There's a McKinsey study uh, that showed that companies that lean into their behavioral data mm -hmm. do 85% better than the companies that don't. And yeah. it, you know, you're a leader at a company, mm -hmm. it's not that you want to ignore your customers, you just, there's so much going on, you don't know how to prioritize. Here's the moment in this podcast where I do the thing that CEOs do and say the phrase AI, <laughs> because we really are at a moment in time where the technologies have changed such that LLMs are able to interpret data right. in a way that we just couldn't before.
They can describe, they can explain, they can infer. Yeah. They can understand, they can, understand. They can suggest. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting to a really interesting moment yeah. in time. And most of the companies that we talk with, when we say, well, how are you gonna go about doing this? They look at their flawed paradigm of collecting data and they're like, well, we don't, we don't know is mm -hmm. the answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're working, you know, I'm on the road all the time, sitting down with C-level executives asking about what their problems are and how these new technologies and this superset of first party behavioral data can unlock problems for mm -hmm. them. And uh, they're the most fun conversations I've had in mm -hmm. about 10 years. I like this business model shift where, you know, allowing your customers to have to be full story customers first. And then if you are and use it for a while, you're building this amazing treasure trove of data, which by the way, then you can use right. for your for all sorts of purposes right. for things that full story itself might not do but you will be able to build on top that's right like that's a interesting journey and not only kind of valued transformation of what full story becomes for customers but business model how do you right. charge for it how do you right. support these customers how do you help them how do you make it secure how do you make it safe like there's a lot of engineering and product development work and marketing work going on right now, I imagine. There is, uh, there is a lot of that. Um, you know, Full Story looks at itself as it, it's first and foremost a behavioral data company. We always have been. Um, that gets obscured when you have a wonderful SaaS pane of glass that people can log into and do things. Data professionals didn't really know that we could help power their engines in a way that they haven't before. Um, and solve real meaningful problems for them. Uh, I was at um, a data conference last week because we're, we're on the ground. We're meeting with data professionals in a way that we haven't before. And uh, I was talking with a uh, chief data officer of a company. What are the things that your data teams are really thinking about? It was a financial services company. It was talking like fraud immediately of came course. to mind. Now, full story in, in the first generation hasn't fancied itself a fraud company, right? We're a digital experience company. But he says, we use full story today by going into your UI to understand bad actors. Mm. He goes, but I tell you, we're building models now with your data to look at how people are flowing through the site what the patterns of data are, and we're able to use that and marry it with some other data that we have back in our warehouse mm -hmm. in order to say, this is fraudulent, shut it down, and it is wow. saving material dollars mm -hmm. for them. And you know what? It's, you're, you're one of the good guys there. Mm -hmm. like, we, get to, we get to help solve problems of bad actors, it's and that makes you feel good. It's a really cool moment when customers use your product in a way you didn't expect. That's right. Because also market signal, you're like, uh-huh, we should be doing that. You listen to your customers. <laughs> Follow, yeah. follow the big problems for yeah. them. That's a good formula. Look, you, you started to build on Google Cloud you know, quite early. And you know, we talk about being a data company. Google Cloud, I think, uh, presents itself, and I think very accurately so, as sort of a unique platform right. to be able to build those capabilities at scale. So this is the part of the podcast where we talk about why Google <laughs> Cloud is so cool and um, how, what that has meant to how full story itself has been built and developed and kind of grown up on this platform. Well, um, given the history that we talked about earlier, yeah. not a huge surprise. <laughs> um, uh, we've, we've always been um, very appreciative of the approach that Google takes to designing their technology in the first place. Um, and so we started early as a Google Cloud customer and we are able to leverage so many different services that they offer to build products faster, cost effectively, and then experiment with the, the latest and greatest that is coming out. Um, as we've matured as a business, and again, like, we're, we're not a fly-by-night startup anymore in the early days where we were thankful for the Google credits mm -hmm. that they'd give us. Yeah. You know, now we're in a place where their teams are very helpful in, in hands-on to us when we, we wanna understand a piece of technology. We're playing a lot with Vertex AI right now. Mm -hmm. not, not a big surprise no that surprise. we would be. Yeah. Um, and they are supportive in a way uh, from a people standpoint and a knowledge standpoint. And 
be remiss if I didn't mention, there's a network of partners like SADA that is also remarkably helpful for us as we continue to try to learn about what's the latest and greatest and cutting and how yeah. do we take all of this data and yeah. help make sense of it on behalf of our customers. Now our teams uh, met for many hours yesterday and we meet regularly, but uh, getting some of the readout from yesterday's interactions, I think in the direction you're going, the way your solutions are evolving, uh, what I love in our customers as well over time and partners like Full Story is we, we're kind of discovering new ways to partner together. That's right. kind of beyond commercial, beyond technical, business model, go to market, etc. We have some big plans together. Before we leave the topic of AI completely, uh, I want to get your perspective because you're a technologist. You have been for many years and, you know, a year ago, year and a half ago, we in this ecosystem might have felt like, oh my God, are we behind? What's happening? Like chat GPT is ours, like, you know, the zeitgeist. What has been your impression and experience in Google's approach to Vertex, to Gemini, to, uh, you know, this extremely rapid release of capabilities in market, which to me felt like they were just kind of like holding on to and all came out at once but you're using it and developing on it in production. What's your, what's your take? I think you pointed out a couple of good things. Uh, w there was this sort of quiet phase and I think OpenAI sort of took a lot of things that were good and solid and in R&D and then got them into the customer's hands really quickly. And we were very happy about that. Um, the, the iteration that we see on these tools is astounding. Crazy. You know, it's by the time we get it up and running, there's a new version of it and it's even better and it's even faster and it's starting to be cheaper. So we're very excited about those. Um, these are world-class pieces of technology and they're built by world-class engineers solving problems at scale. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of faith and um, we're seeing a lot of results with mm -hmm. the way that we do our research and development alongside of Google with these pieces of AI technology mm -hmm. in order to, I mean, at the end of the day, unlock value for our customers, mm -hmm. which it's doing. Yeah, I've been really impressed with their um, speed, Yeah, their dedication, almost feels like it's all we want to talk about now, but um, what's interesting is that these conversations are actually leading to a lot of the underlying work that companies need to do. You've always been you know, built in a certain way to scale and all these platforms, but for a lot of our, our joint customers, if they want to get real value out of AI, like they need the data first and they need to deliver it a certain way first. And there's a lot of you know, foundational work required. So I think it's sort of, you know, pulling forward this new wave of optimism in our industry, which I'm actually quite excited about. It's sort of a complete package if you think about it. You've got, at least from Full Story's perspective, we're in the marketplace. Um, and so if you're someone that wants to experiment with some of these pieces of technology, you can go to the marketplace. Yeah. You can start to get that data into your Google instances really quickly. Um, you can start to leverage some of those technologies you can come to Full Story. We're using that same set of technologies to develop insightful models on your behalf. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think the next 24 months are gonna be buckle up and hold on. Super it's gonna be pretty exciting. Scott, super appreciative of the work that we get to do together every day, how far we've come together in the last couple of years, and really so much potential ahead. I uh, really wanna thank you for the partnership. Thank you for being really an innovator in the space and uh, challenging Google, challenging us to get better every day. And uh, I look forward to everything that we have yet to do together in the years to come. Tony, it's been an honor working with you. Look, Full Story is a data company. Yes, you sir. guys get that? Yes, sir. We're gonna do great things together. Can't wait. Thank you for listening to Cloud & Clear. Check the show notes for links to this week's topics. And don't forget to connect with us on Twitter at Cloud and Clear and our website, sada.com.